Well, good morning and welcome back to the Scottish Highlands again. As you'll have seen last time, <laughs> um, when I left Adam, I left him at uh, Uig Ferry Terminal and I got as far down as the Green Welly stop in Tyndrum and my van packed in. It wasn't the, uh, the best experience ever. I had to get three different recovery wagons to get home. Luckily, however, when I got back home, I managed to get it fixed and it was just a simple fix. It was just um, an intercooler. So it was just a new intercooler and I'm back on the road again. So I've come back up here today. I'm picking Adam back up later on and we're gonna, gonna continue our bit of a journey around Scotland, really. Um, I think we're gonna plan to head back into the woods um, and try and get some of these beautiful Scots pine, some of the Caledonian pine forests. As you can see this morning though, it's absolutely glorious. <laughs> Makes a change from that last few days that we spent together where the weather was atrocious. I'm just hoping for better things this week. Even if it's showery, I can cope with that if we're gonna get uh, bits of weather like this coming through because the light's just lovely this morning. You can see all the cloud just lingering over the hilltops behind me there. So I'm gonna probably head down to the calf and grab some breakfast. Um, I'm waiting for Adam to give me a shout and I'll go and pick him up later on. So, picked up Adam again yesterday and uh, and now look at it. He's <laughs> chucking it down again. Should have stayed on Harris, mate. Yeah, yeah, well, you've probably got better weather, eh? <laughs> it's absolutely hammering down today, so we're just kind of hanging around in the van, drinking coffee, eating cake. <laughs> <laughs> And generally just uh, hanging around to hope I hope the weather clears out a little, eh? And generally just annoying each other. Yeah, yeah. Well, what else do you do, eh? What else do you do? It's just, uh, yeah, just hoping this clears out a little bit so we can at least get out the van and, and try and get something done. Yeah, but it could be worse. Uh, I um, have been talking to uh, my partner, Karen, and the weather in British Columbia right now is just awful. Mm. Flooding everywhere. So this is actually mild compared to back home. So no regrets so far. No, no, should all be good, eh? Unless we have to spend five days in the van looking at each other, then yeah, that will be that will be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it'll clear out a little later on today. And if it does, uh, we'll get back to you then. <sighs> yeah, or I'll just call Alistair and stay in a hotel. Yeah, or we could just go to the hotel and drink beer. <laughs> Sounds a bit posh. <laughs> So as you can see this tree behind me here, we've just been walking across the moorland and there's a few of these trees dotted around this moorland and I think we're going to kind of hang around today and see what we're going to do in the morning, see if the light's any better, but it's it's just literally only about an hour ago stopped raining and of course now it's stopped raining and there's not much in the way of light. So uh, we're just going to have a wander around, see what we can find and maybe come back in the morning if it's not chucking it down then as well, eh? And then uh, take it from there. So just on the way back to the van for the evening, and I kind of noticed this scene in front of me here. I just noticed there was a little bit of colour over the tops of the hills there, and the and the mist rolling in over the tops, very tops of that mountain in in, in behind there. Also, you've got this um, 
Scott's Pine just off to the left and then the curves of the road off to the right. Nothing special, it's nothing amazing. But I just it just sort of caught my eye on the way past and I thought, well, why not just grab a shot on the way by. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't think it's going to be my favourite shot or anything like that. It's just, I quite like the curve of the road and the way that it leads you into the mountain behind there. And then I quite like that tree off to the left as well. It's just got a little bit of interest. So I thought I'll just grab it on the way, way past really. So I'll just darken this down a touch so you can kind of half see what I'm looking at. So on the back here, you've got the road leading in from the right hand side here. And it just leans in and curves off. And then you've got the mountain in the background there with the cloud. I don't know if you can see just the clouds along the top of the mountains there. Now, you're getting to the time of night, actually, when you're getting lights coming towards you, so it, it might look quite cool with light trails, but uh, I don't know whether I'm scraping the bottom of the barrel with that or what. But it's just, just quite a nice scene. As I say, I don't think it's anything special, but I think it just, just has something about it that just maybe works. Well, good morning, hope you're doing really, really well. Well, today, finally, we've got a bit of light and it's looking really, really nice this morning. So I've come back to this tree that I tried to photograph yesterday and uh, it's completely different. It, it absolutely hammered down yesterday. We, we barely even got out the van. We spent the whole day inside there because it just threw it down. There was no sign of any sort of light whatsoever. But today, completely different. Although I've got showers moving through, there's still patches of light hitting the hills in the background there. So I think I'm going to try this shot again and see what we can get out of it. So with this, I'm just I'm just moving around with the camera and trying trying different perspectives with it really because what I'm finding is is the tree itself. If I if I take it from too high up the tree blends too much into the foreground elements and if I go too low it kind of blocks out one of the mountains in the back so I'm having to move around a little to try and get get the sort of best position I can so there's a couple of things I'm trying to do here what I want to do is in the foreground I've got like a tuft of grass behind this rock and the rock itself I want that to be my foreground element and then in the mid ground I've got the tree itself which is kind of curving over to the left there. And then in the background, I've got the lock, which is Loch Marie, and then the hills in the, diff in the distance. And every now and then we're getting a kind of break of light, which is hitting the hills on the right-hand side of the lock as well. And that'll just add a little bit of interest to it as well. But what I'm finding is I need to really get quite low to get this rock in the foreground in and tilt, angle my lens down to use the distortion of the wide angle lens to give me that sort of nice wide perspective. Really quite like it. And what I'm also having to do as well is because there's quite a bit of movement in the tree itself because of the wind, I'm having to uh, alter my ISO and just raise my ISO slightly. Which isn't ideal, I don't tend to like to do that, but needs must. If the wind's sort of th this sort of harsh, I need to raise my ISO so I can get a faster shutter speed to kind of freeze that to stop it moving in the scene. But we'll take this shot and see how it comes out now. Now because the clouds in the background aren't exactly interesting, although there's quite, quite a bit of texture in them, I'm really going to have to sort of sit on this for a little while and wait for the light to happen. See if there's any of this sort of spotlighting that's happening behind me comes down towards the tree or goes further into the background just to add a bit more interest to the scene. So what I was kind of hoping for is some directional light kind of on the tree or, or somewhere in the background. I've got a little bit of light that's been hitting the, the distant mountains on the, on the far shore of the loch but nothing really coming into this sort of area here and it's, 
it's clouding over behind me now. I'm not sure I'm going to get this light that I'm looking for, but I think it's just sometimes a case of just waiting around and not being too impatient. I'll maybe give it 15 minutes or so and see what happens with the with the light and see if the sun, these clouds clear off and give me a bit of directional light on my main subject, which is, of course, is that tree in the mid-ground. Well, I have to say, I think I've given it enough time. I've waited around for a good 20 minutes now and nothing's really happening. I can't stand here all day, but at least I know that this, this scene's here. I've captured it with a, a nice bit of light on that later lock show. So I think I'm going to stick with that for the time being. And if, if perchance while we're still up here, the scene presents itself and there's better light on this subject, I might come back. But for now, I'm going to stick with the image I've got. And if it turns out okay, I'll pop it up now for you. this trail quite a way up now into this pine forest and it's absolutely beautiful through here. I've, I've found this scene that really stands out to me but I'm having a, f a few issues. Number one, as you can see, Bracken and I don't get on. Every time I come out and there's Bracken involved, I end up slashed to bits for whatever reason. That aside though, I'm really enjoying this scene. I really like the tree in the distance there with all the gnarly branches and a bit of the fall colour still intact. Problem we're having in here though, it's so dark, it's such an overcast day and there's no directional light whatsoever, so everything's really flat. And that presents a couple of problems for me. I've got bracken down in this foreground area down here that's moving around in the wind quite a bit. And that prevents me from getting the shutter speed that I want down in the water. So I've tried a couple of things, I've tried doing a slower shutter speed for the water and a faster one for the bracken and maybe blending them later on in post, see if that works. The other issue I've got here though, is the ground I'm standing on, I don't know if you can see that, as I move, so does my camera. And no matter what I do in here, that's happening. And it's because it's like, uh, it's all tufts of moss and uh, bracken, and it just moves as you walk on it. So getting somewhere secure to get a good hold with your camera is pretty difficult. So what I'm actually having to do is when I'm taking the shot, just try and stand as perfectly still as I can so that I don't move the camera when it's taking the image. But I'm trying a couple of different things here. I've tried, I've also tried a portrait orientation shot and that doesn't work as well for me. Because down in this, down in the uh, mid, middle of the scene here, I've got the river running through and I want that actually in it as a, an anchor in the scene, really, from running from left to right down the middle of the frame. And then that tree is the back side of the frame. And in the foreground, I've got these tufts of um, heather and um, bracken all in the foreground area. So I've tried moving around and I think I've got the, my best position where I am. But as I say, the light is just awful. I've been stood here for a good 25 minutes now. I've not moved my camera because I want, I really like this shot, but I'm just not sure the light's going to happen for us here. But all you can do is kind of bear with it and try, really. That's all I can really say. I'm just going to stay here as long as I can and, and hope that some sort of light comes. And if it doesn't, I'll just have to take the shot anyway and maybe return on a future date.
Tom Peters has driven through the night, 12 hour drive to come and spend the weekend with us, which he's very keen, that's all I can say. So the three of us are just walking around, Tom, Adam and I are just having a walk around this lovely oak woodland and trying to find something here.